So I know you are an Excel expert. I know you taught right. Excel in universities before, right? So you are the Excel guru. And in my job and everywhere around me, people are always talking about something called pivot tables. Now, what the hell is pivot table? I have no idea. I, in Excel, I just know how to sum, how to make, take an average, minimum, maximum, basic things. Now, show me some complex and interesting stuff. So it's an interesting topic. I'm going to show you an example. Okay. So we're going to create pivot tables. But before we do that, let me just give you a quick uh, definition, right? That will help you understand what pivot tables are and All why right. they're used. All right. The most important part. So pivot tables is a data summarization tool in Excel. What do I mean by data summarization? Is that you can use pivot tables to basically query your data. For example, in SQL, you have databases, right? You have tables and relationships between tables, yeah. and you use the SQL query language, right, to query the data. Right. Similarly, in pivot in, in Excel, you can use, there's various different ways to query the data, and pivot table is one of them. Let, as now, when as you that. say query the data, does it mean, let's say I have a thousand employees in the Excel file, with name and their employee ID and their address and the salary that they make and the title they have. So let's say I have a thousand of them. Do you mean I can query mean you can I can just filter out all the employees with salaries higher than one thousand dollars or do you mean something else? Just for me to understand. Yeah, exactly. So use cases like that. Let's go through the example. So I have a demo table already. I have it ready here. Mm -hmm. So it's this is let's say for example this is the sales data of company XYZ, right? All right. So now um, let's understand what this data is. So you have your table headers here, mm -hmm. right? So you have year, month, type, sales, person, region, sales, units, order number. So these are all the columns that we have in the table. And now these are the different rows. So your table has some uh, 444 different rows. Right. Let's make sense of this data, okay? So now what does this mean? So this means each record tells you in which month, so in the month of January, in the year 2013, Bishop, the salesperson here, Bishop, sold this amount of ice cream in this region, in the West region, with, which equates to 1,597 units of ice cream, and this was the order number, right? So each right. record tells you about um, the different salespeople, regions, the different type of uh, dessert that you sell. Now... I told you that pivot table is a way to query your data and also data summarization tool. So what do I mean by that? Let's say we're in a board meeting and we have to make some very important decisions. So now the first decision that I want to make is that I want to get a team lead for the sales team. So one of these salesperson will lead the sales team. Mm -hmm. This decision can be made on different factors. The factor that I want to consider here is Whichever salesperson has made the most sales will be the one to lead the sales team okay. or be the leader. So I know it's a very shallow factor here, but just for the sake of this example, right? We want to understand or we want to gauge which salesperson made the most sale. Okay. So how can you do that? So you won't individually get all the sales number here and add it, right, for each of these records because we know there's like around 500 records. So the easiest way to do it I'm going to go to insert, I'm going to insert a pivot table and I can insert it in a new sheet or in an existing worksheet. Let's okay, do so it in existing. So you are now existing. creating a pivot table live in front of me? Right. Can you go so through those steps again just quickly? So what did you do? What did you select So first? I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to click on pivot table. All right. Right. Straightforward. Yeah. So now there's two options. I can choose to create the pivot table in a new worksheet, right? or in the existing worksheet. Right. Now, for the sake of this example, we're gonna create it in the existing worksheet so that we can like juxtapose, so we can have the pivot table as well as the sales data okay. in the same worksheet, Let's right? Let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna select where I wanna create the pivot table. Let's create it in the cell J4. I'm gonna hit okay and voila. It's still empty, there is no table, right? right? A lot of people, they feel like, okay, as soon as we insert the pivot table, there's gonna be something here, right? Mm -hmm. But that's, what that's I the beauty. That's what I know, I know a lot of people do that. The key here is that you wanna query your data. What was my query? My query was that I want all the list of the salespeople with the total number of sales they made, right? So 
how can I do that? I have the salesperson column here. Right. Let me put it in the rows. So now here, look at that. Ah, so you have all the unique. So I have all person. the, yeah, the list of the salespeople, which should be unique, right? Because I just want one entry per salesperson. This is cool. Okay. Right. So far, so good. So it's already coming along. And now the very other easy. thing. I didn't have to type any complicated form or anything like that. Exactly. Okay. It's very visual. It's very like a drag and drop kind of thing. I like that. The UI. Um, okay, so now the other thing I wanted was the total number of sales, right, for each salesperson. Correct. So what, I mean, you can take a guess. I have the sales column select here. The sales column, yeah. Right. I select the sales column and I put it in the summation value column. Why? Because I wanted How the... How did this automatically sum the sales? So that's the beauty of Excel. Excel, whenever it sees numbers, it automatically sums it. And whenever it sees text, it automatically counts it. And is there so, a way to do something else? Yeah, you can. For example, okay, so this is cool. First of all, I did not know this is possible. Now, what if I don't have a column in which I have the total number, total dollar amount of sales? What if I have two columns? One is for quantity and one is for item price. And then you need to give me the person who made the most sales because then you need to multiply column one which is the numbers column with column two which is the price for each item so is, is there a way to do that as well or is it too complicated right now um okay let me understand that so you want you have the units here okay and then you want to add a column which says price per unit is that what you're saying it was the opposite but yeah let's do price per unit that's that's also fine Okay, I, I'm going to have to insert a column then. Okay, I'm going to divide this by this. All right, that's perfect. So we have the unit price of each and every sale. So now we have price per unit. Right. Now, instead of summing just the sales, I want to multiply unit with price per unit so that we get the same number, but with a different formula behind it. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. No, so so these kind of calculations, uh, you you don't do that in the pivot table. You okay. do it beforehand, and that's part of your table. So pivot table is a way is a data summarization tool. You okay. can summarize okay, your okay, data okay. in this way, but not like make calculations. Right. So for so, calculations, you would still use the you would add another column like you just did, like magic. It worked, right? Uh, right. You added a formula and it worked, and then you would have the total number of sales still using one column. Exactly. Right. So that's the reason it is a bit of a drag and drop kind of UI. Mm -hmm. Because you're not writing formulas, you're just summarizing the data you have in the form of a table. And then later on, when you're done with your summarization, yeah. you can also create charts and stuff like that, right? I like that. Like, this yeah. is very cool. So, so I'll try to do something on my own now. Let me give you another example first. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay. So, so right now, we have the sum of sales and we have all the sales pre people here. These numbers these are dollar amounts right because it's the sum of sales so right now if you had to make the decision of saying who your who the lead of your sales team should be mm -hmm. is it easy for you to make that decision now by looking at these numbers yeah it, it is easy it would be easier if it was sorted and had, exactly had right or... right so by the look of it right now these are not in a very standard format mm -hmm. right so some are like one decimal place some are two decimal places so it's a bit hard for us to gauge what this value is as opposed to what that value is and which one's higher, right? And it would become more difficult if we have a lot of, lot more sales people. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So yeah, right. So now a good next step would be if I go to, let's say the sum of sales, right? And I format this value into a dollar value so that it makes it standard. So I'm going to go here to this field, sum of sales. I'm going to right click field settings mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to number right right and then I'm gonna select the currency category because these are supposed to be dollar amounts right sure. and now I can uh, I can select the let's decimal places I yeah, want let's the decimal. because it's, okay we are talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars I don't think decimal will make it okay difference. we can remove the decimals I like that and we can so you see the sample here you can choose like whatever uh, format you want mm -hmm. the symbol should be dollar because it is indeed a dollar amount I can I'm gonna select okay 
hit OK again, and there you go. So now look at that. That makes it so much visually. Ah, so until now, I was thinking that Mr. Pullen is the winner, but it was because it has so many decimal places. I've actually missed it, and I would have chosen the wrong person. Exactly. So okay, exactly. That's... So that is the reason this step was so important. It's so important to have your data in a standard form, right? So Mr. So Parker it... is the winner. Congratulations to Mr. Parker. Right. So so <laughs> the lead of the sales team would be Mr. Parker yeah. by this decision, right? All right. That's cool. And pivot tables help us come to this decision. Nice. So let me give you another example, actually. Sure. So now we have this table. That doesn't mean that it should stay as is. If you want to remove this, you want to create a new table, right? So I can just uh, take this here and just throw it away. Oh, wow. Take this okay. and throw it away. So this is really cool. <laughs> okay. And now I can start from scratch. Yeah, that is cool. So I want to summarize this data in a different way now. Yeah. Let's say we're incurring a lot of losses and we want to discontinue a product. So these are the, all the products that we sell as a company, right? Yeah. All the different desserts. So I want to see um, which is the product that's being sold the least. Mm -hmm. And that's how I would know which product I want to discontinue. Makes sense. Right? Okay. So now to do that, you, sh you can help me now. So what do I want? Okay. That's my test. Let's, yeah. see, let's see if I pass. Yep, so it's your test. So like what kind of summarization do I want So I think here? we need to have the type of product. So I would right. go here and drag the type. Right. So because we need to have all the unique types. You want to drag it here in okay. the rows. In the rows part. Yep. So we have four kind of products, frozen yogurt, ice cream, popsicles, and tasty treats. Right. Interesting. Right. So now you wanted to see which product is sold the, the, the least. least. So I think I can bring in the units part right because price uh, per unit and sales won't make a lot of sense so I'll bring in the units so let's go and drop it in the values part right and uh, I think the answer is pretty clear but let's also make this field with some commas I think that would be a nice you know thing to have Use, use separate. thousand separator. I don't want decimals. It doesn't make any sense anyways. All right. There right. you go. Ice cream is the winner. And we are going to discontinue popsicles. Right. So you see, a decision like this is wow. made so easy with pivot table. This and creating awesome. pivot table is so easy. I was you under the impression that this is going to be a complicated topic for some reason. I know a lot of people think that way un until they see how they're actually created. I, I always tell this to all my students. So the most difficult part you're going to have, you're going to face with pivot table is deciding what kind of summarization you want. Yeah. You know, like yeah. deciding what is the is the question that you want to answer. True. That's the most difficult part. So like, for example, in this case, we wanted to discontinue the least sold product, which we now understand is Popsicle. But what if we don't want to discontinue this product from all our region? We just want to discontinue it from certain region that, Whoa, you know. Where it's not selling enough. Maybe, exactly. maybe Popsicle is the best seller in the in, north region. Exactly. So but if we discontinue maybe, it from there, that would be a stupid decision. Wow, for the I didn't even think of that. Okay. Exactly. So that, that could be cool. the next question we want to answer. We Can want we do to that see. Right now? Yeah, yeah, we're going to do that right away. Let's do so that. now I want to bifurcate that or I want to categorize these by region. So let me take the region column. I'm going to put it here. But this is not very visually appealing, so let me reverse this. This makes more sense. So now you have the different regions, and okay. you're subgrouping each of these desserts, each of these products that you sell. Is it sell also possible to sort this column? Based on regions. Uh, yes, so you can sort it ascending, descending. Let's do ascending. I think it was already ascending. No, no. Uh... And uh, Which one? I think you sorted the row labels. I wanted to sort the numbers. Oh, the numbers, yeah, yeah. So let's do largest to smallest. Wow. Okay, so now let's see. Um, popsicle was the one we wanted to check, right? So so here, look at these numbers. So popsicles are sold in, let's say our threshold was 50,000 units, right? So here, popsicle did 
it does uh, cross our threshold. Right, right, right. So we can't discontinue it from the central region. Yeah. But look at the north region. Only, only, 40, only like some 40,000 as compared to the other numbers. It, this is like really not that big, right? And this is so cool because if I was a company executive, I would also see how much is sold in my central region. So central yeah. region is definitely the leading region. Right. Then we have west in the second. We have, uh, you know, uh, north we have north, north the second, in the second and, and then, then you south. have west so this is very 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 cool i'm very impressed and we can see that popsicle is a loser in all the regions exactly but, we want to but at least keep it in central exactly in the central it's making it's giving you a pretty good revenue you know yeah. more than hundred thousand so but in the north one it's not that big but also like as compared to the other numbers it's pretty good in the south region it's pretty good in the west region too mm -hmm. so the only region we might want to consider discontinuing popsicle from would be the north region yeah right. and also like i can clearly see that maybe in south we need more people you know to sell the product more or the, our product is not just famous in south so maybe we right. can have strategies or marketing campaigns based on that so exactly so you see depending on how you're summarizing your table your sales data mm -hmm. You can answer so many different questions. You can analyze so many different, uh, you know, point of views. And I think if you are a developer working in any company that ha that deals with numbers or things like that, I think you, you should use things like Excel, but these things can also be done with SQL or Mongo. So bring those insights to your managers, to your senior leaders, and they would love it. Like they would love to make business decisions based on numbers. And this is, uh, you know, better than anything I expected. Right, 100%. I mean, Excel is good for even hundred thousands of rows of data. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still good. As soon as you have like more than around a million or something, switch to a database, 100%. Like Excel yeah. would... I would say, would, I would say if you're working on a software, start, start from a database from day one. I'm not promoting Excel for any kind of software. I think it is it is not good enough oh yeah no but no, no, if no. you are not a technical if you're not an engineer working with a code base then excel is like excel has so many features that we don't know about right yeah yeah especially for pretty quick things you know yeah. pretty like basic and quick things excel is your friend like this is, is as your quick as it gets so exactly cool. yeah did you want to try something uh, i'll just play around with a few things so let's say i only want to now i'm curious about what this filter thing does so if you put anything in the filter column or in the filter area yeah you can filter this data in the pivot table based on that field yeah so let's so say for i want example, to get all the sales from the year um 2015 only so I brought this in. Right. Here. So now you can filter ah, 2015 right. and you'll just get the data for 2015. Okay. There you Very go. Cool. Popsicle is still the loser, but I'm getting the data that I wanted. So that is cool. Yeah. Perfect. I think this is really awesome. Are there any other cool features I should know of or you think this is good? For I think now? this is good for starting okay. out. I don't want to... Um, overwhelm you and also bore you with a lot of other details that you probably won't use like yeah. this is good for most people you mm -hmm. know this covers almost 90% of your use case I like that